Hello, are you out there? I'm Mark with Homebrew Fever Dreams, and I've got PC turns to cannibalism immediately. I am very salty about it. Okay, uh, this is coming from Orphan Chocolate, which is a awesome username. <laughs> Long. To preface this post a bit, I want to give the following information. This is the best group I have ever played with. A lot of us are ma game masters in our own right, and we regularly trade the GM screen around. That's cool as heck. Not everyone is an expert at every system we play, and so while GM decisions that I disagree with enable the situation in part, I do not put this at their feet. Okay, so this isn't your GM's doing. Okay, this is a roleplay decision that I do not agree with in my reaction to it that is key here, here in, in the post. Okay, I play a lot of Call of Cthulhu, but my favorite group I play with is the one I see weekly. I drive an hour plus traffic to it in order to play and regularly sing its praises uh, for their role play online. Like, like on the subreddits, you, you say this group's awesome. Okay, that's that's cool. You must really think highly of your group if you're you're bragging on them, which <laughs> which is awesome. So, <laughs> key figures are me, the window washer, the soldier, the geologist, the GM, and the bird watcher. My issue here is not that my character died. This is a common event in Call of Cthulhu, but how they, my character died, yeah. And, and these are like normal classes, because in Call of Cthulhu, I think it takes place in like the 1920s, 1930s, right? So it, it's like within a century of our modern time. It, it is kind of like modern-esque. That's why you got like geologists and window washers. So if you don't know anything about Call of Cthulhu, you should learn. <laughs> we just relay, released an interdimensional ir irregularity and saved the world. An unfortunate side effect of this was a large explosion that took out a couple of the other PCs, including the Birdwatcher. Okay. Releasing an interdimensional irregularity saved the world? Like, releasing it, like, back? In, ba like, you pushed it back through the dimensional crack? <laughs> I, you didn't release it into your world? That sounds really bad. Just... I'm no expert, but... Okay, we'll keep going. I had scrambled up the hole left behind by the irregularity soon after it had left, before the explosion. The explosion then prompted the other PCs nearby to also clamber up the hole after me. Okay, so you guys are... Right, it, you're subtraining, whatever, you're escaping this explosion. Um, they were soon after joined by a fast-moving monster. Ah. As the GM described it, the three of us were deposited at the top of the hole soon, followed by the monster that began to peek out of the top of the hole. <laughs> it's, just, it's just like some eye stalk, right? <laughs> With like this horrible pulsating eye on it, just looking around. Um, it's interesting because in the Call of Cthulhu mythos, the scale of creatures is like human size to like, uh, like a mile tall, right? Kilometers tall creatures. But... Even the small ones that are just like the size of a dog or a person can be like incredible Hulk level dangerous. Like just, I don't know what it is. In, in, I, I think a lot of the creatures come from like other dimensions in the Call of Cthulhu mythos. So they're not like made of the material or the power level from us. So when, when something crosses dimensional barriers, it is like... It's not just like, oh, I'll just shoot it with my shotgun. It's like, nah, dude, that thing can rip a tank in half. Like, level... It, it, it plus psychic abilities and all sorts of crazy shit. So, at any rate. Um, so you're running. Yeah, I would run too. No characters were under the influence of sanity conditions at the time. Which just means no one was insane, right? I mean, if you got sanity conditions, that means you're not sane. You're insane. Yeah, okay. My character was running away from the monster in the previously explored monster lair and so took off in the vague direction of civilization. The geologist failed a con roll and further succumbed to an illness that was taking him. Okay, that's good. All right. At this point, the bird watcher out of the game decided to tell the soldier to shoot me in order to then later eat me, which he did. Knowing the bird watcher... He would think it would be fun, but as evidenced by this post, I feel quite contrary. So Bir Birdwatcher died in the explosion, though. So you your Birdwatcher player is in spectator mode, right? Like, 
I can see making little comments with, like when your character dies, which is pretty rare in most role playing games that that you have a char- a player with a dead character and they're sitting there waiting for the session to be over. You know, it could be boring, but in general you just watch the f- the story unfold that the other players are still doing. They still have to save the world. So and I'm not saying you have to keep your mouth shut, but but to like tell another player, "Oh, have your character do this." That's backseat role playing. That's a big no-no. Like you can laugh or make a joke about this and that, but you should not be telling other players when you're dead and you're just at the table, don't be like, "Oh, oh, divine, you should divine smite now or you should uh, you know, you you should use the holy water or remember you have this the, the necronomicon in your backpack." It, it's like, no, 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 no. That's that's for them. I mean, would you do that at the table if your character was alive, right? If you're, you know, you're playing the the paladin and the rogues over there, and say, oh, rogue, remember, do this thing. Uh, you can, I guess. I don't know. That seems super weird. But ultimately, why w- would the soldier, the the bird watcher, w- is the soldier crazy? Why would the soldier shoot an uh, a friend to then eat him later. I'm guessing you guys are in the wilderness, like you in the, the Arctic. Is this like the thing or something? I I don't understand why he would need a human food source. Uh, okay, let's keep going. That that sounds sketchy as heck. And obviously, yeah, I would be pissed off if one of the we well, got PVP'd. I mean, yeah, yeah. You got PvP'd, and you were probably unarmed, if I had to guess. You're, you're a window washer. Seemingly, everyone else was fine with my character dying instantly, but I insisted on him actually rolling for the shot and then rolling damage when he hit. I believe the fact that it was the end of the session and the scenario that made people more amenable to the idea, but nonetheless, I was not okay with just deleting my character like that. Yeah, you... Listen... On the RPG horror stories and in the comments like a thousand thousand times on here, folks, everyone's like, yeah, PvP, don't do PvP, or PvP with consent only, or talk about PvP in your session zero. I mean, clearly PvP was okay in in your table, but this is why it's not okay, because people are just like, dude, IRL, why did why did you come at me like that? That's not That doesn't make me feel good. That was not fun for me. That, right? That's why PvP stinks. It's player versus player, not character versus character. It, it, it would just It's just like you're at the movie theater and someone just dumps their Coca-Cola in your lap. And you're like, dude, what you? why did you do that to me? I don't want you. It's just like, hey, we're just having fun. It's just a night out. We're just here at the movies. It's like, screw you. <laughs> this guy, that was mean. That was just literally a mean thing to do IRL. This decision has upset me for a handful of reasons. One, the soldier had no reason to fire upon me, an ally. Yes, he didn't because that it was meta. It wasn't role play. It wasn't role play. It was it was completely meta. If you're playing a goof around game, yeah, uh, if you're playing a goof around game, players are going to like meta all the time. They're going to self-insert. It, it's going to be shenanigans. I'm thinking like paranoia or something. But you've been role-playing with these people for years, it sounds like, multiple games. W- why would they think it's okay to just do a meta throwaway stupid thing now if that's not something you guys have done in the past? Or or you have and you're not telling us OP and then this is kind of normal for your table? But I'll tell you, I'll tell you what it sounds like is roleplay fatigue. It sounds like possibly the soldier and the bird watcher, one or both of them, have been playing too much lately, too many games too often, and are simply bored of it. So they're trying to entertain themselves through non role playing at a role playing game. That's exactly what this sounds like. And listen, this ain't the end of the world. This isn't like you gotta, you know, fire or quit your friends here. But uh, yeah, I would say the two of them probably need to like, you know, take a month off and uh, come back to the table when they are 
ready to get into their characters' heads and role play as them for a while again because that's that that's just boredom jack assery. Okay. Two, even if there was cause to fire upon me, surely that is a lesser priority than either the monster currently peeking out of the hole, though it started it, though starting to head back down the hole at this point, or the ill comrade standing next to him. Yes, don't assign logic to this. <laughs> Sorry. You're trying to assign logic and be like, weren't there way more important things to do? Yes. And Birdwatcher being like, shoot him because he's a coward and running was one thing. But for Birdwatcher to say, shoot him so you can eat him later was jackassery. Again, unless you were all going to face starvation. In which case, the soldier should have shot the sick guy and run for it, leaving the, the, the dead guy or the wounded guy for maybe the monster to eat as a distraction, right? And then he could have killed you later as a fresh food source. That would have been role-playing. Three, this wasn't even the soldier's idea. Yeah, <laughs> I was just, yeah. Four, the soldier got a bonus die to hit. Call of Cthulhu's version of advantage, despite a moving target that really should have had a head start on everyone involved. Sure, if you're running and you said that you, if you got to the top of the hole first and you said you ran before everyone else, then it's not unreasonable to for you to have had a 30-foot or 100-foot head start. This feels like a betrayal from the group, which I love playing with so much. I don't want to say it's a betrayal from the group. For one possible reason. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not telling you what's going on. If PvP is allowed at your group, at this table, grid game, without consent, then it was jackassery. It was just people just being rude and inconsiderate for fun. Yeah, that's pretty messed up. But, again, this isn't like Oh, wait, you, it, this isn't like um, a window washer saying, whoa, soldier, you can't shoot him. That You, you have to get consent. Are you okay with that? Sorry, your window washer. <laughs> you, you go. Geologist. This isn't geologist saying, hey, soldier, you need to ask window washer's consent for PvP, remember? And everyone's like, oh, yeah, that's right. That's our rule. That's our table rule. No one did that, but I'm assuming because... You guys don't have that rule. You just get to willy-nilly just bang, shoot somebody anytime you want at your game. I don't know why you'd play that way, because that makes zero sense, because it's not fun, right? <laughs> Is evidenced by your hurt emotions, and I think everyone reading this gets that. Anyone who's ever been through that situation in PvP um, that, that they didn't want to get into... Whatever. PvP is just like... Eh. In almost all cases, folks. Five... Feel, yeah, betrayal. Okay, we're closing in here. Ultimately, the character was going to die one way or another, but I feel cheated having another player kill me for no reason in this manner. Yes, you were. I also recognize that this is a game, and it really doesn't matter, but that doesn't change the fact that I'm feeling these emotions. Thanks for being a place to vent. I feel much better. Yeah, the, the, the subreddits, you know, especially our the, the tight community of roleplay reddits on the Reddit are usually a very safe, good place with really understanding people. There's tens of thousands, so I'm glad you're able to vent and get some catharsis. It's the word we all throw around here. But yeah, writing this out, talking about it, thinking about it, is really helpful in, in getting, I'm sure, a hundred bits of good advice from the community really helps out. Um, you you recognize that this is a game. It's a game to the players. It's not a game to the characters, and that's why this sucked. Because a player told another player, hey, make your character treat this like a game for no roleplay reason whatsoever. Yeah. It's only a game for the players. Characters shouldn't be acting like it's a game. 
Okay, uh, edit. So this blew up. Uh, yeah, it's pretty popular here. <laughs> I gave it a karma. Um, we won't get into the comments, but um, I can't believe I get to say that. You do, and I made a video. I don't know if I'm the only one, but I'm, well, I don't care if I'm the only one. I'm glad I got to make a video of it. Um, thank you for giving me the okay, OP. I really appreciate it. Orphan chocolate. I'm going to address some facts in here rather than reply individually to everyone. Yeah, down below, but let's get through. All right, so there's just four of them. Let's just belt these out. Number one, yes, I will address this with the group either all at once or with some members individually. I wrote this at nearly midnight after driving home from the game. Spending the time to write this allowed me to coordinate my thoughts and calm down somewhat as I know myself well enough to understand that I that had I addressed this while still quite upset, more things may have been said that I may not have necessarily meant. <laughs> You were a wise person, uh, OP. It, it's the old saying, like, sleep on it. Sleep on it, right? <laughs> it's like, put down that phone. Do not write that text. Yeah. You, you got to give it time to breathe, calm down, think about how you feel instead of just, <laughs> instead of just expressing what, what you feel. <laughs> you need to be able to think about what you feel in order to really write it or even talk about it usefully in life. Yeah, that's just good advice. <laughs> Two, this was the final session of the setting before we took a break for Christmas. We will be going back to the setting now with all new characters, yeah, in a couple of weeks. So Christmas break here, folks. It's December. Um, this happened in the last maybe five minutes of the session, so I can see people wanting to wrap things up neatly enough rather than have the baggage of the characters trying to get to civilization hanging over the start of the new scenario when they come back. I'm, I'm guessing someone brought up that point to you? Yes, but... Yes, I understand the party would want that, but how does your character getting shot do that? The, um... The, the sick guy and the soldier are still there, right? They're not out of the woods. How, how did your character dying resolve the, the story? I don't... that Right? No. No. <laughs> Three, the bird watcher is someone I consider to be one of the better friends I have in the group, and I consider them all my friends. He's a sweet, genuine guy, and I'm beyond certain that this was not some grudge move. However, he does have a flair for the chaotic, and I can practically guarantee he will justify this as his own crazy way when I ask him about it. Okay. I I'm, I'm reading this like about four days after you posted it, so this is all recent events. I don't know if you've talked to your friend friend, bird watcher, or the group yet. But I'm just going to give you a quick reality check. If PvP is okay at your table, <laughs> then they didn't do anything wrong aside from be... I, they didn't break a rule. Was it inconvenient? Was it rude? Was it callous? Was it not funny for some of the people there? Like, oh, you thought it was funny? Awesome. I thought it was negative funny. Yeah, I thought it was like slightly painful to my emotions, actually. Huh. Pleasure for you, pain for me, please no more. But it, the fact that your group... You can wag your finger at the other players. That's your right to do. Certainly you're hurt. But I would encourage you to play it at a table where PvP without consent is not allowed. And you as the player would have been able to say, no, you don't shoot my character in the back. I do not consent to that. Can we keep going here, folks? Let's not do this shenanigans. That's... Yeah. <laughs> PvP sucks. Number four. On this character was about to die thing we're several days journey from the nearest town in the middle of the desert without much supplies or a way to effectively travel back so you were in the middle of nowhere i would have been quite content with my character running out of water and dying if the gm really wanted to tie up the scenario without anyone surviving yes sure or or big thought the soldiers the soldier really wants to survive He's been to war. He's done whatever it's take, it takes. He's eaten people before. He shoots the sick guy who's helpless and is a liability and can't move as fast anyway. 
thus increasing his ability to move on with you, the healthy guy. Then when food gets short and you're starting to starve, the soldier kills you three days into the desert and then feasts upon your body to stay alive and make it back to civilization. That would be cool role play within the realm of a loud PvP. It would have made sense on many levels. It would have shown a pattern of behavior for the character. I was a soldier in hell and war. In World War I, I ate a German in the trenches. Uh, right? I am already a little insane despite the sanity check. Then I killed the sick man who wasn't going to make it anyway. Leave his body or leave him injured for the monster to finish off so we can escape. Then, when all seems lost and we're breathing our last, I take mercy upon you, finishing you off and then feasting upon your bodily fluids. That would have been badass. And that's what was missing here. was just jackassery, meta goofing off instead of roleplay. Woo. Yeah? Am I right? Hey, OP, thank you so much for letting me read this. Thank you for sharing. Everyone else loved this. It's not on me. Like, you wrote a great story. I, I hope you feel better, and I hope you patch things up with your friends. Sorry I got so hot. Okay, if you watch, thank you.